YouTube, we're back. It's Brian Phillips. We're here for the Phoenix Evolution 1.6 meter or 2.6 meter. You can do either one. In this case, I'm going to build it the full size. We've got the pieces laid out. Did our unboxing the other day. Got the uh, parts kit here. And we're just going to work through the assembly on this thing. I'm hoping it's a fairly quick and easy thing. Okay, so look over the manual. Looks pretty straightforward. They're recommending that we connect the rudder angle. What? Connect the rudder angle of the side. Of what? As with most Chinese manuals there's going to be lots of things that are sort of not quite right but it doesn't really matter so what we're going to do is we're going to start by kind of spilling out all the the stuff here i'm not 100 percent sure i'm going to end up putting these decals on or not usually i do decals but i'm not 100 percent sold on these decals but it kind of reminds me the consendo where you'll get these Kind of like these weird details that look kind of neat, but not. I'm not a huge fan of that look. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my taste. Okay, so that's the bag of goodies. So you get a couple of Y cables like this. Y splitter servo signal splitters. We'll slay those out of the way. Got some control horns for the servos obviously we got the prop and spinner this here is a 10-6 uh, folding prop and I know that from past experience dealing with other Volantix planes namely the ASW 28 which is sitting right there and you might have remembered this from recently I that thing is big it's a little tricky to store so anyway coming back to this Got the control horns. We'll be using those shortly. So we'll bring those with us. Got some screws. Looks like two different styles here. Got some that are coarse and some that are a little bit less coarse. And then we've got these pieces. These look like the wing bolts. So we'll have those available when we need them. And then, of course, if you're doing a pure glider, they have included a nose cone that can be adapted directly onto the plane. I won't be using that because I'm going to use the powered version. Let's pop this stuff open real quick. Looks like we got our control adapters that go back to each of the control horns. Always a good idea to lay this stuff out if you can. Okay, so we got two longer and two shorter. We got these pieces that will very likely um, work on the tail, but I don't know that for a fact. We may have to come back to that. And we got some more screws here. Looks like some longer black ones and some a uh, couple different lengths of the whatever those are, silver, nickel plated, whatever they are. Pretty sure they're not silver. Okay, so this is actually what goes on the the rudder or the vertical stabilizer and rudder. And then this is going to slide through the tail. And you can see that this is tapered, so that'll help us to determine which direction that goes. Then this is supposed to slide in here. And it comes to a rest right there. So it's kind of a good idea to try to dry fit this stuff first, make sure you're going to fit properly. All right, so and of course some extra bags for later on if you want to use those for something else and we've got a screwdriver so my first step is going to be to go ahead and get this rudder assembled and I just want to get a feel for how this is going to go together to avoid the confusion looks like it goes this way guys and that's a pretty tight fit what do we have going on in here? Nothing. It's hollow. Okay. Is that the way it goes? 
you know what? It goes the other way. So the lowest point's here. Okay. And then, of course, that will feed through to the top. And we don't have any servos to worry about back here because the servos are up here in the middle of the body. And then this is keyed, so it'll only fit in a certain way. Looks like we got some double-sided adhesive here that we have to try to figure out how to get the... Or is that just plastic, guys? It doesn't say to glue this together. That could just be plastic to actually make a little bit more thickness. It's very strange that... I don't think this whole thing is supposed to come off. Huh. That's kind of weird. That's when directions are handy, but of course in the directions here they show it having already been assembled. And they don't make a mention of it really, do they? Insert the linkage to the corresponding hole of stabilizer. Okay, so it looks like this screws on. So hypothetically, they've included this so that you can take it apart, maybe? That's a little bit strange. I didn't expect that. And there's actually a little piece that creates a, a gap there that you're going to have to pass through. So I'm going to go ahead and slice and dice that. So we can get past... And that would have more than likely broke. I'm just trying to figure out if this has backing on it, like if it's adhesive backed. I don't think it is. It's just a hard piece of plastic. That's very strange. And we'll probably use a little bit of mucilage on there because I have no interest in leaving this bare necessarily. Although it's got a really good bite on it. Jeez. You know what, guys? That That's... You don't even hardly need the screws on it. It's very sturdy. It's not even slipping at all. So, I think we're good. We'll just go ahead and put that together. But now we have to figure out what screws to use. Looks like they got a black screw there, so there's one, two, three, four of those. So if there's four of those, <laughs> if there's four of those, but there's only two holes, I wonder if the black screws will also go in the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> they don't show that either. This is typical Chinese instructions. It's sort of like, they just like take a couple of pictures and they're like, yeah, throw those in there. Step one, who cares if that should be done on step 14. So, not probably the end of the world. This is a, a great value for this plane, so I'm not going to get too upset about that. Doesn't seem like there's one side over the other. That would work better. So I would normally not use a drill on any of this stuff just because my experience is if you use a drill, mistakes get exaggerated like this where it's it's not quite lined up yet. So I can kind of kind of pull that over with my middle finger and see if I can get it to bite to go straight into the hole. Okay, there it goes. It's, I believe it's going now. That is very strangely effective. And it's like the exact length. <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. So maybe they just sent to extras, guys. I don't I don't know for sure on that. Hey, wait. Did they go in here? They do appear to fit in there, too. So we may need to use those. I'm inclined to do one from one side and one from the other. Because that way, for sure, we're going to hold this thing together one way or another. That's what I'm doing. Insufficient Chinese directions be darned. I'm going to go from this side now. So once we're done screwing this tight, then we'll go ahead and put the vertical stabilizer onto the fuse. 
vertical stabilizer and rudder, I should say. And guys, I I far prefer a bolted together or screwed together plane than I, than I do over something that has to be glued. The thing that's nice about that is you can get it apart. Like if you want to do a modification, this thing is slick as crap. I can't hold on to it to save my life. Every time I try to put it up against my belly, it just slips off of it. Not wanting to line up very good here. So I'm going to grab this and pull back toward myself a little bit on this area, and that'll help us to manipulate the angle down. I'm going to try to force this down at an angle if I can do it all at once. Oh, that's not good. I'm evidently moving up against the plastic and it's misaligning it. Okay, time for time for a drill. Time for you to come in handy drill. Please grab on. That sounds good, doesn't it? Ah, oh, son of a gun, it doesn't grab it. This is kind of a small head, so I think it's a number one Phillips, but I'm not 100% certain of it. Eh, we'll see. Let's just try it like this real quick, make sure. Yeah, it'll work. Now I can kind of push it an angle like this. I'm pulling down. Gosh, it's not wanting to line up again. Yes, yes, I got it. Yes. Nice. Okay, so the moral of the story is, if at first you don't succeed, keep trying the same stupid way until it works. I don't think that's the way it goes. Well, we'll stick with it for now. So now the next thing we gotta do is we have to try to slide this into the receiver that we just did here. Okay, now we're supposed to have hooked these up, but we gotta put the horizontal stab on first. So we will do that before we move on. We're actually gonna put the little control arms on first. These directions, and I'll be the first to admit, following directions may not be my strong suit. Which is why my wife does the taxes and not me. I hate doing taxes. I just get too mad. Mucilage. Here's part number, guys, if you're looking for it. Look at that. This is a large bottle. They sell it in a small bottle too. It's probably all like dry and crappy, so I have to take and um, use something to get it started again. So I'll just ram jam this thing in there. Okay, so that's not working as good as usual. So I'll, I'll go for the backup plan. Jeez, this one's already screwed up too. This will work. And I usually just do that to get it coming out again. And it works generally effectively. Yep, there it is. And you wouldn't have to put glue on these, but I just I just find it's a lot easier to actually get it kind of hold in there while you're working. I'm just going to share that little bit of glue that I put on there. That keeps them aligned with the holes neatly. And then on this side especially, you can kind of glue that to the surface and it'll hold everything in alignment. Now these screws are easy, they're all the same screws. And I'm gonna go for the drill again. Something I normally don't do on model airplanes, but that just worked so dang good the last time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a little bit demoralizing because um, evidently my screws are too short. Um, they, they don't reach, guys, if they're, they're just too short. 
Jeez. I'm having to really push hard. Do I have another bag of screws that I missed somewhere? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, looks like these are all the same length, too, so... Um, let's try this again. Those are all the same length, guys. Look. Yep. Okie dokie. We will try again. <laughs> Doesn't really look like that's going to reach so hot. I guess we will um, have to compress the foam a little bit, which is not probably a big deal. But it's kind of annoying to have to do it. I had this happen on a plane the other day. I can't remember which one it was, though. There it goes. Okay, so I got it to bite. And that is a heck of a compression. Look at that, guys. Okay, whatever. It is what it is. I'm fine with it. Um, then also the screwdriver that came with this kit, you can use it to back out the screw a little bit as well. Of course, I seem to have misplaced it. It's like those kid shows. Find the screwdriver. Where is it on the screen, kids? Where is the screwdriver? Help Brian find his screwdriver. Where the heck is the screwdriver? I just want the freaking screwdriver. Isn't that what they do in those kid shows? Well, in this kid show, they do. Kids, help Brian find his freaking screwdriver. Oh, yeah. Yes. All four screws, guys. We're going for the quadruple. You could even probably do this with, like, um, somewhere between no and two screws. But, uh, yeah, four would be the best. What you want to do is use them all up and then realize they only gave you enough for half. Oh, yes. That looks very good. That's so weird. It strangely looks exactly like the screwdriver I got in the kit. But it's not. Back this off one half a turn. I want them to be totally flush. And then that compression in the foam won't be such an issue. Alright, so that looks good. And oh, there it is, guys. It's been over here the whole time. Everybody failed the test. Connect the rudder after we put that thing on. So we gotta do the same thing on the elevator and I'm gonna spare you guys the boredom of that step. No, I'm not, you guys have to watch. That's your punishment for not finding the screwdriver. Just a little lather of this. Ooh, oh buddy, oh buddy. How do I know which side it goes on, guys? It goes on the bottom. Yes, it does. And if you put it at the angle that they have, you're going to have to be careful about your alignment because otherwise you'll hit this plastic piece, the reinforcement that goes from the, uh, the left half to the right hat half. See, now they only have two holes um, that are pre-populating the foam. So I think technically we could do this with, these ones look like they'll reach better at least. We could technically do this with just two, but I'm going to use all of them probably. No, I'm going to use two and then I'm going to go look at the wing and count. Because the flap servos plus the aileron servos could mean that we don't have enough. So I want to be careful. These screws are always like a weird size too. Good luck finding them in the US. Unless of course you have a Chinese plane to take them out of. Oh buddy, oh buddy. This little hardware is just notoriously difficult to find in my experience. That's why you have to be careful not to, oh son of a gun, look at that. Okay, I got it that time. Woo! Okay, so here we go. I 
I'm just going until I feel it protrude out the other hole and then I'll back it off just a hair. This one needs to come through a little bit more. All right, so let's count on the wings. We've got one, two, three, four. Four times four is 16. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Look at that, guys. We do have enough for four on this. So we are going to put all of them in to make our lives totally peachy and never have a problem again. Let me use this magnet because I'm sick of picking them up. So now, with the elevator in hand, we'll toss those things. Oh, son of a gun. Four screws. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I have to push out on it. Yes. There it goes. Maybe? No? There it is. Alright guys, in case you're wondering, when I build these things and I drop a screw, it's super annoying. So I'm going to pause it while I find the screw right now. Okay guys, I found it. It was in the most ridiculous place ever, as is typical. So now the last screw. What am I not going through for? See, it's wanting to walk around. There we go. Okay, got it. All right, so now that we've got that on, we should be able to go ahead and assemble the surfaces onto the fuse. So this is gonna align properly there. Then we have to get this thing adjusted a little bit, but let's look mechanically at where it sits. I've centered these to the central position. That does not mean they're centered electrically yet. So we already have an XT60 on here, which is what I intend to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the receiver cut out and I'll show you what I'm using. Okay, so into my bag of goodies, we're gonna break out the bag of receivers. And we're gonna break out the Lemon RX7 channel with stabilizer. Oh yeah, baby. I love these little things. I got links to them. I don't care for the uh, plus because I don't like the auto leveling. I don't think it's super effective. And I uh, just dropped some screws on the ground. So I'm gonna work that out right now and come right back. Okay, as you can see, I'm sick of picking those things up. So I have four different magnets and four different types of screws. Now we can go ahead and get back to the Lemon RX stuff. Okay, so be real careful. These antenna are really they're super uh, delicate and hard to see because they're kind of clear. So you gotta hold those out of the way and then come in here and cut their packaging to save the world. Hey, note to self, Lemon. Go ahead and save the world however you want except for getting me things damaged. <laughs> so package it enough to get the job done and keep the shipping cheap. So whatever, I guess for now, you're pretty much doing that. Okay, here it is. Antennas out to the side. We got three, three dip switches, or excuse me, not dip switches. We got trim pots here. You know, you know, you know. And then we have different settings here. Flapper on, VTEL Delta, rudder elevator, and aileron. And so what you're going to need to do is to turn on the stabilization. You're going to put both of these on. Or once you've selected what you want, flip them both the opposite direction, which negates stabilizer on or off. Okay, so flapper on support, 
yes we want and VTEL and Delta we don't care about but we want them both switched over so that it's on stabilizers on we don't know what direction the elevator rudder and aileron are going to need to be yet but we'll find out soon enough noticing the bind plug is down here we'll go ahead and grab the bind plug and we'll stick it to it right like that okay so this is the double-sided adhesive backed piece of tape we'll leave that there for later then we'll go ahead and start plugging things in we have a radio here we'll get ready to bind that next all right guys so we're going to look at setting up this lemon rx now with our radio so first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to system setup if you're using spectrum shut off your rf go down to model utilities copy model and you're going to pick the from and the two in my case I'm going to cancel out of that because I just did it. Evidently the camera decided not to start. So we have a copy. So we'll scroll down here to system setup. Yes. And then we'll go into model name. And we're going to change the name to... What are we going to call this? It's going to be the Phoenix Evolution. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing that in. And I'll come right back when we're done typing. And you can see what it looks like. All right, guys, so we got Phoenix 2.6 because I don't think you can fit Phoenix Evolution on there. So I'm going to go back, go back, back to system settings. Whoops. Go back to model select. Make sure you're on the mo right model. Back out all the way, throttle six down. We should already have a throttle cut, but we verify that. This is the monitor. Watch throttle. It's not moving. It is moving. It cuts. Okay, we got the throttle stick down. Then we're going to check our timer. We're going to set that to five minutes to be on the safe side. And it's going to be active above 25%. It's going to be started and then stop. Okay, good. So we can clear that out. Throttle cut is on. And don't worry, I'll go through at some point how to set up all the settings from the ASW28, okay? So the first thing we got to do is plug in our electronic speed control, which this is where the BEC powers, and we also send signal back to control the throttle. We're going to plug that into the throttle wire, or throttle port, which is the second one over, with the orange or white up, depending on which brand of ESC you're using. Just like this, and then your bind plugs in. So now we can go ahead and just be careful with these antennas, they're very small. Then go ahead and plug in your battery. And we're flashing. So radio could be off at this point or on depending on what type of radio system. You're going to press and hold this bind switch in this case. Turn it on. Watch the flickering on the right side of the screen. And we've got it. Okay, so, basically now we have throttle cut on, throttle cuts off. There's your throttle, throttle cuts on. We don't have any movement on the servos because they're not plugged into the receiver yet. So we're going to go ahead and de-energize the pack, or we're going to unplug the pack. We're going to take the bind plug out because we want to get that out of there so we don't cause other problems for ourselves. And then we're going to go ahead and reach these wires. I'm assuming the servo, or excuse me, the receiver is going to just be somewhere back here. Actually, it might even be right here. So, we might go ahead and feed that back. We'll leave the radio on. It's going to be on in just a second again. Actually, I usually power cycle my receiver. I know it's probably unnecessary, but it's just kind of a more a matter of habit than anything. So, we'll shut this off. Remember, we've already flipped our dip switches on here so that the stabilizer will be active and I've done so many videos showing setup of the Lemon RX 7 channel with stabilization that I sort of I haven't had a model that's so close in a long time that I've been able to copy it I have done that a couple of times but this is going to be set up almost identical to the ASW28 okay so I'm just pulling these servo wires up. They don't need to be pretty yet. Not cable management time yet. See how this is coming under? There's kind of a housing here. Then we'll go ahead and go throttle with the orange up. And then one of these is the 
elevator and one of them is the rudder. I believe the rudder is going to be, the rudder is the bigger servo. So this one's the rudder. Okay, and you, it's kind of, I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but this is a bigger servo than this. The elevator servo is smaller on this plane. So we're going to go straight into elevator with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just make sure this isn't going to be in a compromising position where it's going to be damaged. Then we can turn on the radio system, throttle cuts on, everything else is where it needs to be for safe reasons. Okay, now we're looking at where the servos go. Okay, so throttle cuts off, giving it throttle, and back to nothing. We do have no braking. See how it's not braking? That's ridiculous, so we're going to turn that on. Throttle cut is off. Power down the unit. Throttle stick all the way up. Make sure your throttle cut is off. Okay? You want the output of your throttle to be up. Okay? Plug in the radio system. Listen. and down. Okay, it's rebooting. Okay, so we didn't get it yet. I need to wait a little bit longer on that, guys. Sorry. Throttle stick is all the way up. Listening again. Down. Now it didn't do the, it goes beep, 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 nothing. That means your braking's on. Beep, 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 beep. That means your throttle cut's not on. Or I mean your uh, braking is not on. See? Full throttle, nothing. Throttle, nothing. Nothing, okay? So, we're done with that. That's always nice to have, the braking on a glider and we are about to run out of memory guys so we're gonna pick this up with our second video in the series the build series for the Volantix Phoenix Evolution 2.6 and 1.6 meter wingspan sailplane thanks for watching there'll be lots more to come this will be a fairly easy build so hopefully just a couple of videos getting this thing put together and then we'll wait to see if we want to go ahead and put LEDs and all sorts of other fun bells and whistles on here. Check the link in the description below. Buy yours for your very own. Very economical. Go over to Bang, Banggood to help support those guys. Uh, they sent this for us to review today and uh, be cool if you could give them some support for that. And it's gonna be awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.